Ongoing maintenance is important to ensure that the effluent system continues to perform. One of the biggest issues with ponds is managing the build-up of settled solids in the first pond. Whenever effluent enters a pond, suspended solids settle out and add to the sludge layer on the bottom of the pond. Department of Primary Industries researcher Graham Ward explains. It's important even with the best of ponds and effluent systems that they be maintained. Unless they're well maintained, they won't process and store the effluent effectively and problems will occur. And typically the sort of problems that we regularly see are people letting the sludge build up to too great a depth in the first pond, so they need to desludge them more regularly. We need to do things like make sure that rubbish and carcasses and other non-effluent things get into the ponds to choke them up which can cause problems down the track with blocking up of sprinklers with irrigators and blocking up drains and, and so on. You have to de-sludge a pond when the depth of the sludge on the bottom of it starts to get too high and it starts to interfere with the processing of the effluent. Now this depends upon the number of cows that are being milked, the size of the pond and how quickly the processing is occurring. So, what are the indicators that the pond needs to be desludged? Worsening water quality in the second pond is a big one. If you are noticing more gas bubbles rising to the surface of the second pond, then it may be due to too much sludge in the first. For a single pond, too much sludge starts to reduce the amount of effluent storage that's available to cope with wet periods. If you've had a pond designed recently, then the plan should give you some indication for how frequently it needs to be desludged. If you get a contractor to empty your pond for you, it is important that you are very clear about where you would like the effluent spread and at what rate you would like it to be applied. Generally, the thicker and darker the sludge in the pond, the lighter you want to apply it to land. If applied too heavily, you can get a smothering of some pasture plants and risk runoff of solids after rain. Make sure to advise the contractor of any water courses or areas to avoid, and try not to apply the sludge to paddocks near roads or neighbours to avoid complaints. Ask the contractor how much liquid needs to be retained in the pond to assist in agitating the sludge. Removing any excess before the contractor starts will reduce the amount of time the contractor is on site. One of the difficulties when we are desludging ponds is that it's an expensive operation and to make it effective we need to extract sludge with a high solids content. Now most of the commercial systems or equipment that we do use will extract sludge at up to 8 to maximum of 10 percent solids content. The problem if we don't stir our ponds properly or the equipment's not right is that we can be extracting sludge with only two, three, four percent solids, which means that we're then transporting a lot of water, makes us desludging a lot slower and a lot more expensive. The nutrient content of sludge varies with depth and stirring. To get a representative sample, the sludge has to be first agitated and mixed. So it is generally not possible to get results back from a lab before the contractor is finished. But unless you've made significant changes, you are better off using the nutrient concentrations tested during your last desludging, as they are still more accurate than using your neighbour's results or industry averages. You can have more confidence that you know just how much nutrient is being applied from the sludge and it is worth the costs incurred in recovering it. It's an expensive operation to desludge a pond and spread it on pasture, but the increases in pasture growth, we've found in our experimental work that the pasture responses and the resultant milk production pays for that desludging operation in the first three to six months. So although it might seem a lot of money at the time, the responses that you get both um, reasonably quickly but also in the longer term do pay for that operation very quickly. In summary, maintaining effluent ponds to prevent solids buildup 
is the best way to keep the pond functioning. Getting a good contractor who can fully stir the pond before pumping it out and applying it to land will help to realise the nutrient value of the effluent and ensure a rapid productivity response on the investment.